Today, I'm going to be attempting to guide you through the process of choosing and purchasing your first road bike. The first thing you have to answer is why you're interested in a road bike. Is it for competitive racing and fast bunch riding or for more gentle recreational riding to get the heart rate up? Not everyone shares the same fitness, flexibility or athletic ability. The bike industry caters to almost everyone, but that doesn't mean that every bike is right for you. In the simplest sense, most brands have their road bike ranges divided into three key categories. The modern all-around race bike is the type of bike you often see in the Alps during a Tour de France, and as a result, some people call them the climber's bikes. It's a bike that aims to balance lightweight, stiffness, comfort and aerodynamics, all in the name of covering different roads as efficiently as possible. The Giant TCR is a good example. It has low weight and high stiffness, but merges in some riding comfort and aerodynamic design too. These bike types often feature fast handling and also often feature 25 or 28mm wide tires and taller gearing. Almost every brand selling road bikes has a bike like this. For Willier, it is a Zero SLR. Sharing similar handling and fit with the all-round racer, the Aero road bike often trades an absolute low weight for aerodynamic gain. These bikes are typically the most efficient choice on flat or rolling terrain and typically a good option for more powerful riders. Philante SLR is built for going fast while still being lightweight. Of course, it comes at the expense of increased cost. Other examples of aero road bikes include the Willier Cento 10, Giant Propel, Maria de Reacto, and Cannondale System 6. The modern endurance road bike aims to take the sporty nature of the all-round racer and make it more accessible, comfortable, and versatile. The fit is more relaxed and the ride is often more compliant and the gearing is lower for easier climbing and the steering characteristics are often less nervous too. It's worth knowing that not all endurance bikes are the same likewise for other road bikes. Some are more relaxed and recreational in design while others trend closer to race bikes. Endurance road bikes exist at all price points, however you'll find that most entry level road bikes options typically trend towards being a bike of this variant. Villiers endurance road bike is the GTR team or the Zero SL. And other popular examples of endurance road bikes include the Trek Domane, Specialized Roubaix, Cannondale Synapse, and Giant Defy. This second step will most likely be a key deciding factor in the bike you end up with. So how much are you willing to spend? In the simplest sense, spending more will get you a higher performing bike that is lighter, lightly more aerodynamic, more durable, and perhaps even more comfortable. Here are the next key elements to consider. A more modest budget is likely to keep your buying decision to an aluminum frame or perhaps something made of steel. A bigger budget will open you up to carbon fiber or titanium. What's important to note is that the exact type of material used matters a whole lot less than how the material is used. A wonderfully engineered aluminum frame can be far more enjoyable to ride than a poorly designed carbon frame and the same applies for all material options. Carbon fiber offers some impressive engineering potential. Most obviously, it can be formed into shapes that would be extremely difficult with metal, while the directional nature of the material can be used for tailoring stiffness and comfort. Still, just because of frame features, carbon fiber doesn't mean it's better. Almost any cyclist would rather ride a great aluminum frame than a mediocre carbon version. The question of rim brakes versus disc brakes is one of the most hotly contested debates in modern road bikes. In a nutshell, the biggest brands in the bike industry have deemed rim brakes as old technology and almost all investment in product development is being put into progressing disc brakes. Rim brakes remain the lighter option and will provide you with a lighter bike for the same money. Meanwhile, disc brakes aim to offer increased stopping control especially in wet conditions, open up clearance for wider tires and are fast becoming the only option on a number of popular bikes from big brands. After the frame, it's likely the wheels and tires that will make the biggest difference to the ride. It can take an experienced eye to tell the difference between wheels, but some key things to look for are rim width, a high quality build with even spoke tensions, and reputation for hub durability, example DT Swiss and Shimano. Wheel set weight can also be a factor in how lively the bike feels. Roughly speaking, road wheel sets over 1600 grams are considered on the heavy side and it's common to see wheel sets over 2000 grams or 2 kg on entry level bikes. Typically, the more you spend, the more gears the bike will have and the smoother they'll function. The vast majority of road bikes on the market today feature Shimano components with competitors SRAM and Campact Nolo appearing on higher end bikes. If you want an utterly dependable and affordable group set that has nearly all of the performance of Shimano's higher tier group sets, the Shimano 105 is very highly recommended. 
for those looking at Shimano Altegra level bikes or above will likely need to decide between mechanical versus electronic shifting. It's worth noting that the frame and wheels will play a larger role in how much you enjoy the bike versus the components that are bolted to it. If given the choice, invest in a better frame and wheels before going with better derailers and shifters. This final step is something that would have been strongly suggested in the past but current pandemic times have all but made this impossible. Bike availability is so limited at the moment that bike shops are no longer carrying demo fleets like they would have in the past. If you can manage to ride around the block or even something longer, that's great, I encourage you to do just that. However, there's a good chance you'll need to buy your next bike without having tested it. If this is the case, then listen to the opinions from people you trust. I hope this video has helped you with your purchasing decision and regardless, the joy of purchasing and riding your first road bike will be memorable and stay with you for a long time. So that's it for this video, remember to like and subscribe and we'll catch you next week.